The Mini 3 and 3 Pro differ mostly in their video functionalities, but they are practically identical in terms of photography. In this video I will give 9 tips on how to improve the quality of your photos with these two lightweight DJI models. Some tips apply to photography with any camera, others for drones in general, and some of them relate to specific features of the Mini 3 and 3 Pro. Probably the most important tip to get consistently good results in drone photography is to choose the best light conditions. I never shoot in the middle of a sunny day, as the shadows are very dark, the contrast too high, and the results always disappointing. It is much better to choose the so-called golden hours. The first two hours after sunrise, and the last two before sunset, for much softer shadows and a warmer feel. Another excellent time of the day for drone photography is right after sunset, when the street lights turn on and there is still a bit of natural light. This gives us the possibility of having some control over the lighting of the scene, a bit like being in a photo studio, with the artificial lights acting as the main source and the twilight as a fade light to smoothen the shadows. I only shoot photos or video in the middle of the day when the sun is covered by cloud, as they act like a giant softbox, softening the shadows. In general, it is much better to have very little difference between the lights and the shadows, in other words, low contrast. It is then easy to increase the contrast to your taste while editing, but reducing contrast is a much harder task. To get quality images, it is crucial to get the correct exposure. It is always better to err towards underexposing rather than overexposing, as it is possible to recover dark shadows up to a certain degree, while there is nothing to do with burnt highlights. The only tool I use for exposing photos and footage is the histogram. I leave some empty space between the last bar to the right and the right edge of the histogram to make sure that the highlights are preserved. When exposing manually, at the bottom of the exposure window, the MM value displays the luminosity resulting from the exposure values. Since the Mini 3 and 3 Pro have a slight tendency to overexpose, I prefer to have this value in slightly negative territory, between minus 0.3 and minus 1. I always use manual exposure, as it is often useful to control individually the shutter speed and the ISO, the only two values available in the Mini 3 models, as the aperture is fixed. By using a longer shutter speed of about one second, with the aid of ND filters, it is possible to get silky waves and clouds, add some motion blur to moving subjects, or create some interesting special effects. You will find plenty of examples in my video about long exposure photography by clicking on this link. In the description you will find info about the ND filter I use. And if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, it helps to spread the video to more viewers. I also suggest using manual white balance to have consistent colors while editing. With most other drones, I like to set the white balance value at around 5500 kelvins, but in my experience the Mini 3 and 3 Pro have a tendency toward a yellowish tone, so with this model I prefer a lower value of about 5100 kelvins. The Mini 3 and 3 Pro have an automatic exposure bracketing photo mode. When it is selected in the photo menu, the camera will shoot three or five photos in rapid succession with an interval of two-thirds of a stop between each of them. I always use A and B mode with five shots when I shoot photos for two reasons. First of all, to make sure that I always get one photo perfectly exposed, since I have five different exposure values for each of them, much like an insurance policy against wrong exposure. 
The second reason for using AEB is that it is then possible to merge the file images to HDR with your photo editor to get at times better results, especially in situations of high dynamic range, like shooting in the direction of the sun. The software will take the darkest part of the image from the brightest photo and the brightest ones from the darkest image, thus reducing the dynamic range. For more detail about automatic exposure bracketing, please refer to my specific video by clicking on the link on the screen. The Mini 3 Pro was released with a famous so-called 48 megapixel photo mode. In the Mini 3, this mode has been added only recently via a firmware update. We enter the 48 megapixel photo mode in the photo video menu. It works in both orientation, the traditional landscape or the vertical mode specific to the Mini 3. The Bayer Quad sensor of the Mini 3 and 3 Pro has a real photo resolution of 12 megapixels, but it has the ability to split each pixel into four smaller ones, thus achieving a sort of 48 megapixels. Photos taken in this mode have a slight advantage in terms of detail in easy light conditions. This is useful, especially for arc prints or when deeply cropping an image. Experienced users can also try merging 48 megapixel photo into a panorama for insane resolution. The downside of this mode is that the resulting pixels are much smaller and therefore collect a lower amount of light, resulting in less info in the shadows and lukewarm results in low light situations. Photos saved in RAW format contain more information, especially in the shadows, and respond better to color grading and color correcting. With the Mini 3 and 3 Pro, when in photo mode, it is possible to choose to save the file either in JPEG or in JPEG Plus RAW. JPEG photos have already a good dose of post-processing applied. They are in a way pre-cooked, so they have less latitude for post-processing. It must be said that in the Mini 3 and 3 Pro, JPEG images have improved a lot, therefore they can be used to quickly share them on social media. But I always suggest saving in both formats, even for users that don't do any photo editing, it will be valuable to have a raw copy of their images when they will get addicted to post-processing, or they can ask a friend with editing skills to process their best images in which case the raw file will be needed. The same scene might look in many cases better by applying some basic rule of composition, and in any case, by knowing the rules, it is possible to break them. One of the best known is the rule of thirds, used not only by photographers and videographers, but also used for centuries by master painters. It consists of not placing the main subject in the middle of the images, but rather on a third, either horizontally or vertically, or both. The Mini 3 and 3 Pro have an overlay with a grid to apply this rule. As an example, in drone photography very often we have the sky and the horizon in the frame. It is in general more interesting to have the horizon in their upper or lower third, rather than in the middle. Sometimes the same applies to a landmark in the scene. Rather than placing it in the middle, a position on one of the thirds can be more appealing. In the case of a moving subject, it is recommended to place it on the third which leaves more space in the direction of the movement. The same scene looks different from different angles. With drones we have the possibility to access unique point of view. When taking image of a scene, it is a good idea to take plenty of photos at different angles, varying the altitude. Intelligent flight modes like point of interest or spotlight are excellent tools to find the best perspective for parallax. Try circling around the chosen subject or flying in a diagonal line at different heights and distances, while taking plenty of photos. Then, in front of the computer, while sipping an exotic drink, 
choose the one that offers the best perspective and the most interesting angle. Beginners starting with drones tend to fly as high as possible, but very often the best shots are from a low altitude and relatively close to the subject. Bird's eye view photo can only be made with drones and they often result in a completely different rendition of familiar scenes. This tiny island off the east coast of Sicily is very popular around here, everybody knows it. But when I show a top-down photo to friends living around here, they could not guess what it was. This fumarole in Iceland, seen from above, looks like an abstract painting by Klimt. A vineyard might be mistaken for a cashmere blanket. With the Mini 3 and 3 Pro, it is possible to shoot video and photos in vertical format. These fish are mostly used for footage, but certain subjects fit very well in portrait photos. Photographers, like painters, often use lines and geometrical patterns to add interest and to lead the eyes in a specific direction. Drones have the ability to move the point of view to different heights, offering even more possibility to use lines and other geometrical patterns. In post-processing, it is sometimes useful to rotate the shot to find the most interesting angle. To make the most of a specific location, it is important to inspect it well. Often, when visiting an unknown place, the first photo session is very useful for scouting purposes. We take as many photos as possible from different angles and different elevations. When analyzing the image taken in front of a computer, we often spot the ideal shots that we will take going back in the same location. A very useful tool to inspect an unknown location is Google Earth, where it is possible to move around the place with a 3D view on the computer to carefully analyze the scene. When preparing a photographic trip with a drone, always inspect the official maps to find out if there are any restrictions due to regulation. Consult the maps of the Aviation Authority of that country or DJI FlySafe maps. Click on this link to watch my video about all the settings needed for photography in DJI drones. And don't forget to hit the like button if you found this video interesting. Thank you.